Well, good morning, everybody. As we commence our first online service, I must admit to being deeply saddened that we've got to this point uh, that we can't get together as we normally like to do on a Sunday morning here in the church building in God's house to worship as a church family. I'm also feeling slightly strange today because uh, I'm leading this service uh, with only a handful, a small handful of people here in the church and there are empty pews all around us. This looks like it's going to be the way for some time because it's important that we all follow the guidance and hopefully um, you'll be able to still worship with us as a church family week by week. As our good friend Jim Lindsay said to me on Wednesday night, we have been through troubles in the past. We've had so many different occasions over the years. Apparently there was a, a cholera outbreak here in the end of the 18th century and a good percentage of the population of Killalay died. And then in the middle of the 19th century, the famine devastated our countryside with somewhere between 10 and 20% of the population dying and, and the same again, emigrating away from our lands. And then we had the two world wars, of course. Uh, and at the end of the first world war, the Spanish flu killed nearly more people than the war itself. And, and of course, we've had the troubles and we've come through each and every one of those really dire situations, all with God's help, all because God is faithful to us. He is with us and he will support us and help us through this period. Life will go on. The world will still keep turning and life will go on. It won't be a bed of roses. God doesn't promise that, but he has promised to be with us even through all the deep sadness that will come in the days and weeks ahead. Today, I'm conscious that um, there are people who can access services online from all all over the place. Uh, you can listen to services on the radio. You can listen even to um, the Archbishop of Canterbury on the television, and you could watch the live webcam recording of the Down Cathedral service, which is going to be going out at 11 o'clock each week. But I think it's important that we, uh, as a church family, gather here in Killalay and try to worship together. If you are able to watch our service online today, it's because you've the right sort of device. It's because you know how to work it. It's because you heard about this service. Uh, but many of our regular worship, worshipers aren't able to be with us this morning because maybe they haven't heard about it or they don't have the right sort of equipment or they don't know how to work it. So can I ask you, please, 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 Make sure if you've got elderly relatives or friends or, 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 or neighbours who aren't too um, au fait with today's communications, please help them and, and tell them about these services. I'll say a bit more about that later as we go along. So any notices and communications which we want to make will be on our Facebook page and our website. Um, and if those members who aren't able to join us today aren't even getting them, they will feel isolated. So it's important that we don't leave them out. As we commence our worship today, let me welcome you all, especially if you don't, don't normally worship with us here in Killalay. Um, I'm not on my own in the church, as I said. I'm joined by a couple of friends down here at the front. We've got Dorothy Cranston, um, one of John Wesley's preachers, um, a, a, a leading Methodist uh, and uh, a good friend of this parish, not, not only through her, her husband Jack and, and her husband's family, but um, being an occasional worshipper with us as well. Dorothy, it's great to have you at the front with me helping to lead uh, and, and worship this morning. And we've also got Tracy Davis here. Tracy, who's the GB leader, as you all know, in, in Killalay, the GB captain and a regular worshipper here with us. Ladies, you're most welcome as, as you help me lead and, and be the congregation here in the church today as well. And of course, 
we've got a couple of guys behind the camera. You won't see them. We've got Darren and Joe um, from Soaring Production TVs. And it's a huge thank you to them for being here today, for giving of their time so willingly, um, for using their skill and their experience and their equipment to get this service online. So thank you to you, Darren and Joe. And thank you also to, to Stuart and Henry for, for, for posting stuff on, on our Facebook pages and on the website. Uh, I know I've been calling on you a lot lately, so a huge thank you to you both uh, as well. And uh, it's important, as I say, you do keep, um, keep in touch with what's going on on the Facebook and the website. Just by the way, if you haven't seen Darren's previous work for us on the website homepage, there's a wonderful drone tour of the church, both the inside and the outside environs. Have a look at that. It's an absolutely wonderful th three or four minutes film. It's on the homepage of the website. So as we commence our worship and continue with our worship this morning, uh, um, today is obviously Mother's Day, and so the uh, theme running through the service will not only be what's happening in our world and the COVID-19 virus, but we'll be focusing on Mother's Day. So as we continue our service, can I just remind you that we're all here together to worship, and, uh, and hard as it may be at home to cut out all the distractions. It would be great if you could turn off phones and everything else and just try to focus on God for the next half hour or 40 minutes or so together. So firstly, we're just going to pray and give God all the praise and thanks for this day. We give thanks, our Heavenly Father, for all mothers who gave us life and all women who cared for us and our children. We remember and lift up to you all who find this day difficult for whatever reason. We praise you for Jesus, born of a woman and nurtured in her love, and for Mary, a reminder of your patient waiting love. Blessed be God forever. And as always at the start of our services, we have an opportunity to think of those things which shame us, those things which we want to say sorry to God for. Let's call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others, and our failure to love as Jesus has loved us. Your love gives us life from the moment of conception, yet we fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good, but we seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. So often we ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a special prayer for this Mother's, Mother's Day, Mothering Sunday, as it's called in the church. Heavenly Father, you chose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of our Lord, your only begotten Son, and to suffer with him. Help us too to bear the cross, so that we may share with her in your life forever. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to turn now to our appointed psalm for today, which is a well-known psalm, um, maybe the most popular and, and well-known piece of scripture, perhaps. It's so appropriate for today, Psalm 23, a great picture of God as our shepherd and us as his sheep and him leading us and guiding us and caring and protecting for us. And Tracy is going to read this psalm for us. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hope you all enjoyed that hymn back at home um, sometime in the future. We're not sure when, but we, we'd love to be able to get the words to you so you can sing along at home and uh, not feel embarrassed. Uh, but for now, we're here in church going to affirm our faith together using a, a slightly shorter version of a creed. We believe. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And Dorothy is now going to bring us our reading from the book of Exodus. The reading is from Exodus chapter 2, beginning to read at the first verse. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women, Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. 
So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we're coming to the sermon now, friends, um, and this is not a cue for you to, um, to go out and make a cup of tea or to um, fast forward if you're watching later in the week or join in later in the week. But uh, um, you can get your sweet sweets out and, uh, and, and enjoy a sweet because I think it would be traditional in this church to have a sweet during the sermon. But uh, just before we start, perhaps I can ask you to be quiet for a moment as I, as I pray to God. God, our Father in heaven, as we come to your written word now, I pray that you would just clear our minds of any clutter and help us to, to focus on you, open our hearts and minds and our ears to your message so that by the power of the Holy Spirit we can hear your voice speaking to us. And by the same Holy Spirit, may I only bring you glory this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're in uncharted territory. Uh, as I've heard a few people say in the past few days, these really are extraordinary times. The amazing thing is the unbelievable speed with which things are changing. Just over three weeks ago, we had our first case of COVID-19 diagnosed in Northern Ireland. And in no time at all, our whole society has been turned on its head. Imagine someone going into hibernation at the end of February and waking up today to such a different place. Disbelief and surprise would only be two of many thoughts and emotions. However, as Bishop Andrew Foster of Derry Diocese, the new Bishop of Derry Diocese, said on Tuesday as he was preaching at Downpatrick Cathedral, we may be surprised by everything that has happened, but God isn't. He is still in control of his creation. He still is all-powerful all and sovereign, and that in itself should bring us a sense of peace. It should bring us a greater desire to depend on and trust in him. It should bring us an understanding that worry and fear and panic and stress and all other similar responses are self-defeating and unnecessary in a world created by God and held tightly, oh so tightly, in his hands. If God cared nothing for the world, if he wasn't involved in the world, if he was merely punishing us all for the way humanity has largely turned its back on him, as I've heard some suggest, for leading a life far from the spirit-filled life he planned for us, why would he have come into the world as Jesus to save and rescue us all in every era, in every place? If punishment and suffering were God's ways of dealing with the evil in our world, with selfish, godless ways, with sin, Jesus would never have come, suffered, and died. But the good news is that Jesus did come so we can live. That gospel message is unchangeable, and it gives huge hope for the future, no matter how messy our current predicament is. Friends, Wherever you are listening or watching this service, no matter your own situation, which may indeed be bad, please think about Jesus as we edge closer to Holy Week. Think about the reminder of his suffering and the celebration of his resurrection. Whenever I myself have doubts of faith, I imagine Jesus with his bloodied brow and crown of thorns, walking along the crowded Via Dolorosa, crowds hemming him in in Jerusalem, being jeered and laughed at, struggling to walk with his beating that he'd suffered and carry the bar of his cross tied to his red raw shoulders as he slowly headed to Calvary. That vision quickly strengthens my faith 
because from that darkness on Good Friday came amazing light on that first Easter day. Fix your thoughts on him. Ponder on Jesus whenever you are feeling unable to cope with the oppression of each day's news. He can and will bring a peace which we can't understand. So today is Mother's Day and my heart goes out to all those who are separated from their mothers because of the restrictions and advice on movement. Just last Tuesday, my son and I were, were talking about visiting my mother today, but, uh, but by Wednesday, I think we both came to the conclusion that it wasn't wise, no matter how much we wanted to. Instead, we're planning to FaceTime her now, I haven't a baldy how to do that. I am a bit of a Neanderthal, as a lot of you know, but thankfully my son is of the generation that knows these things from birth. I hope somehow you can communicate with your mum today. And I hope and pray that you, you also, you tech-savvy folk out there with older or not so old relatives maybe, with friends or relatives who aren't able to work laptops or iPads or, or smartphones. I hope you all take time and be patient in showing them how to avail of today's methods of communications. Show them how to access these services via our parish website, kilalayparish.com, or our Facebook page. It's likely that we'll be worshiping this way together for some time, and it's very important that they aren't excluded. That reading which Dorothy read for us um, just a moment ago from Exodus chapter 2 is clearly about a mother, the mother of Moses, who did what she could to protect her son. If she had done nothing, Pharaoh would have had him killed. Pharaoh was worried that the Israelite slaves in his country were getting too strong and too many of them. So he commanded all the Egyptians, if they saw a Hebrew baby boy, to throw him in the river Nile and drown him. Moses' mother protected him by hiding him for three months. But when he was getting noisier and bigger and too hard to conceal, she put him in a basket at the riverbank in the hope that he'd be found by an Egyptian and looked after. Moses' mother risked her life for him. She could have been killed for what she was doing, for loving her son. And our mothers too do exceptional things for us. That's why today we make a special effort to remember everything our mothers do to acknowledge and to say a big thank you for the sacrifices they make for us, for their endless work and constant love. We also want to thank God for our homes and the love we get there and for his constant provision and care. Think of baby Moses on that riverbank, on his own, vulnerable, in a perilous situation, not able to protect or fend for himself. His whole life dependent on nothing untoward happening or the wrong person finding him and throwing him in the Nile. We too today are in a very perilous position now. Like baby Moses, we're definitely not in charge of our own protection and well-being. We're currently subject to the vagaries of whoever we come into contact with. They may be carriers and spread this virus to us, or they may not. And if they do, we're not sure how our body will combat it, if at all. But like Moses, with his sister and God watching over him, we are God's children. He knows our vulnerable condition, and he will not let us fall into the wrong hands. Trust in his protection and in his provision. As I close now and before we sing the hymn, When I Needed a Neighbour, Were You There? Can I ask you all to think how you can best be a neighbour? Not, not just to those next door or to family, but to anyone who may need you as we, as a community, as a nation, as a world, come together 
under God's leading hand to beat this thing. When I needed a neighbour, were you there? We join now in prayers and thanksgiving for mothers. For mothers, loving, protective, intuitive, compassionate, full of wisdom and grace, we give you thanks and praise, O God. For mothers, vulnerable, frustrated, harried, and worried, especially about coping in the next month with schools closed, we pray for peace. For those struggling to raise children who are tired and weary, we pray that we may may offer real help in hard times. For relationships that are strained and no longer a source of joy, we pray for healing. For mothers who have died, who live no longer with us, but whose light shines on in our hearts and memories, We pray for those who mourn and give thanks for life eternal. For mothers who grieve, who have lost children, born and unborn, we weep with those with broken hearts. For those who are preparing emptier nests, we both celebrate and feel sad with them and hope their children's wings are as strong as their roots are deep. For stepmothers, navigating the pitfalls and joys of creating a new family, we pray for wisdom and patience. For grandmothers and others doing the hard work of raising children again, we pray they have someone to care for them. For those who are waiting and sometimes struggling with the biological process to bring new life, and for any who are waiting for adoption processes to be completed, we wait eagerly with them and offer our hand of love to hold. For women who have no children, but still teach, care for, and guide the children of others, we give thanks and praise, O God. We give thanks for the women created in your image 
who have influenced our lives in many ways. We pray that we will honor them in everything we do. Amen. Gracious God, Mother and Father of us all, on this special day of thanksgiving, we glimpse your love for us through a mother's love for her child. As a mother nurtures her child, you nurture us. As a mother tends and protects her child, you tend and protect us. For the intensity of your love, we praise and thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we offer prayers for all those affected by the coronavirus. God of peace, we remember those living in coronavirus hotspots like Italy, China, Iran, and all around the world, and those currently in isolation. May they know your presence in their isolation and your peace in their turmoil. Amen. God of all comfort, we pray particularly for those who are grieving because of this virus, reeling from the sudden loss of loved ones. May they know your comfort in their loss and your hope in their despair. We pray for those who are vulnerable and scared, the frail, the sick, and the elderly. Amen. God of all wisdom, powerful and merciful, we pray for all medical professionals dealing with intense pressure. Give them discernment and compassion. We pray for the World Health Organization and those working to develop a virus. Give them wisdom beyond their own wisdom. Amen. Thank you, Dorothy, for leading us in that Mother's Day litany. I now want us to pray a prayer, a wonderful prayer, which is actually in our prayer book. It's an older prayer, but one which our Bishop David has called us all to pray between now and Pentecost Sunday, early in June. It's a pray for our, a prayer for our land. Almighty and merciful God, who in days of old didst give to this land the benediction of thy holy church, withdraw not, we pray thee, thy favour from us, but so correct what is amiss and supply what is lacking, that we may more and more bring forth fruit to thy glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'd like us all to pray the Lord's Prayer. And you can pray this wherever you are watching and joining in this service at home or wherever. Pray it, pray it through. Pray it out loud as well. Jesus has taught us to be intimate with God, to pray our Father. But God our Father in heaven is neither male nor female. He, um, he is characteristics of a father, yes, but he also has the characteristics of a mother too, like sacrificial, unconditional love, like nurturing and caring, all of which we saw in the Moses story earlier. Um, but we would also add other things such as forgiving, uh, a protective nature, educating and guiding. So I'm going to introduce the Lord's Prayer in a slightly different way, but please join in with me. Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm now, as is traditional, going to move to the, the front of the church where I'll pronounce the, the final blessing and, uh, and bid you farewell. 
So before we have our final blessing, I would just uh, like to say a couple of words. Um, Firstly, it's been uh, really good to to worship with you this morning. Hopefully you'll rejoin us every Sunday. And uh, and remember, these services are available online on an ongoing basis. So if if you've missed any of it, or uh, if you know anybody who wasn't able to join in, uh, please do mention to them or say say to anybody at all um, that the services are available. Thank you for doing that. Um, Secondly, um, what, what I would like to do is thank our folk who've put the service together, those who've been involved and those who've helped with the camera work and the sound and, and broadcasting this to you this morning. It's been absolutely tremendous. A big thank you to you, Darren and Joe, especially. Um, what I would also like to say is that in, in this time, while my movements may be restricted and I'm not permitted to visit in nursing homes or hospitals or even in people's homes. If you do have a pastoral need, please, please do ring me. Please don't not ring, but do get in touch with me. Or if you have a spiritual need, or you have a challenge of faith because of what's going on or anything like that, don't keep it to yourself. Pick up the phone and talk to me. I'd be so happy to talk to you. If you have a basic need, um, such as some groceries or medicine or, or or, or um, and like uh, toiletries. Um, hopefully, 80% of people will be uh, okay by getting family involved or, or, or close neighbours. But if you are in the category where you are not having any family who can help you, then what we're trying to do is put together a team here in Killale. We're working with other churches, with the health search, sur- centre, with the surgery up, up there. Uh, with local councillors, with other folk, and with particularly with the Killalay Community Association, to put together a, a strategy so that nobody goes without. Uh, and at the moment, what we're trying to do is get um, a list of 40 or 50 volunteers, young, healthy, fit volunteers, who maybe take a street or two and, and be responsible for making sure that everybody in our neighbourhood gets what they need when they need it. So if you can volunteer and you're fit and young and, and have a bit of time, then please go online to the Kill Lake Community Association and put your name forward. And finally, if we have any youngsters here listening and watching this morning, can I say to you that the commandment, the fifth commandment on our mothers and fathers isn't honour your mother just on Mother's Day. I'm sure you're being lovely to her today and nice and kind and doing things for her, but wouldn't it be great if you did something for your mum and your dad every single day of the week? And can I ask you, between now and bedtime, to think of three things that you want to say thank you to your mum for, three special things, and then at bedtime, you say thank you to your mum for those three things. And also, when you lay your head in the pillow, say thank you to God for your mum. So may Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves and to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you today and always. Amen. And we're now going to sing our closing hymn, which is a great hymn which you'll all probably know. Now thank we all our God. And there's some wonderful words in it about our mothers and being taken from our mother's arms.